Scotty, in the pregame, we really talked about New Orleans front court. How much was that really the difference in tonight's game? Uh, yeah, it's uh, those two guys, actually three with Steven Adams. Ingram, all-star, Zion, all-star player. Um, they're tough to stop. They're aggressive. They're making shots. Uh, threw a few different players at them, different schemes, uh, good players. And uh, they, ma they made big plays. Um, give our guys credit. We battled. We fought. Um, it's the same thing. You know, we're, we're just we're, – we're playing hard. We're just not uh, – we're just not able to finish. I thought we cut the lead to eight. Uh, then they hit a three. We missed a three. Like I said, those two guys are really good. And we just we just didn't have enough to keep the game. What more can you say about just Brad's fight? Uh, he could have easily, and you could have easily just sat him at the end of the third quarter, uh, but he continued to just to go out there and compete. What kind of message is your leader sending non-verbally when he's out there competing like that? Yeah, he's a, he's a serious athlete. That's what I love about him. He's a serious guy. He competes. He wants to win. He's a winner. He's, we're not winning as a team, but he's, Brad is a winning basketball player. Um, we're shorthanded. He could have easily said, Coach, that's enough. Uh, he actually wanted to keep playing. Uh, and he probably played about three or four minutes, maybe too many. Uh, but that's right now, that's all we had offensively to, to keep, keep us in this game or get us back into this game. We're down you know, mid twenties and we cut it, to, cut it to eight. We made plays, they were trapping them. He was feeding the, feeding the big for the row. We we're kicking out for corner threes. Uh, Brad's a winning basketball player. I couldn't ask for a better, better player to coach. Uh, our organization lucky to have him. He leads. Um, Leads our young guys, leads our, leads our team, leads on and off the floor. The guy's uh, as good as a person as he is. Probably, I mean, obviously, he's a better person as he is a player, and that's pretty hard to beat. All right. Scott, what, what's, what are those decisions late in the game like for you when your roster is even shorter because Len's got the fouls and all that, and, and you're trying to put together – just enough firepower to be able to sustain a comeback? Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, mentally taxing, there's no question. I mean, we got, we got two bigs uh, against a team that's big, picked up a bunch of fouls, uh, but you gotta, you gotta fight. You can survive in this league if you have that grit and that toughness and that competitive spirit and that will to win every possession, doesn't matter how big you are. Uh, you, can, you can make it in the league, you can stay in the league if you do that. Uh, if you don't, you're gonna make it on your skill set and that's gonna be a short-term career. But you know, we got guys that fight and battle and I thought, you know, I'm proud of them. This road trip was rough. You know, we didn't come away with any wins, but we knew that we were, we were gonna go out there and compete and battle and, we were hoping to close out one of these games, but it didn't happen. Uh, but got guys coming back soon, and you know, I, I still still positive on what we what we can do. It's, it's still early in the season. Whatever, thirteen games in, fourteen games in. Zach, coach did. This road trip kind of reminds you of the bubble in a way, just playing shorthanded and just trying to get some growth um, in these competitive games, but, you know, not any playoff situation, obviously. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's some similarities, but like I said, there's no excuses. We still want to keep fighting, keep competing, keep um, uh, improving as a basketball team. We know we knew we're going into this. I mean, nobody's, nobody's done this before ever. Never in the 70-something year history of the league. Nobody's had to do what we've had to go through. And, you know, we're, we're going to be healthy. Uh, we're going to be whole soon. Uh, like I said, in pregame, uh, everybody worked out now. Uh, the last person got a workout in and looked pretty good. So don't know if they're, don't know if they're all going to play. Don't know if some of them are going to play. But 
we're going to be we're going to be healthy very soon, and then we're going to be able to uh, be the team that we know we can be. And and that's the only thing that we can do right now is to keep fighting and, and keep working and keep you know just incremental gains every day. But it's going to be nice to have a, a whole team together. But that's just part of what we had to go through this year. Ava. Scott, on that note, um, when I believe it was earlier this week, you said some guys might be able to join you on Friday. Would they be able to actually get minutes in a game and good to go? Or what do you mean by when they rejoin you? Yeah, no, they've been uh, they've been getting some great workouts. A lot of, I mean, we, we have a, our performance team, medical team, sports scientists, they have a really good game plan. And we have coaches back really working them out and simulating games, uh, game minutes, and a lot of the acceleration, decelerations uh, were accounted for. They were getting, some of their workouts were being equivalent to almost 25 to 30 minutes of game minutes. And, and we're gonna be able to do more. Uh, they, they did more today and they're gonna do some more tomorrow. And then let's see how they feel. Um, there's a great chance, uh, don't know how many, there's a great chance that we're going to have uh, quite a few players back soon. I'm hoping, I'm hoping Friday. I can't, I can't guarantee it, but I, I know what they're doing. I know they were working every day. They felt better. So they've started off on Sunday. So most, some of the guys started off on Monday. So they're going to have five, five or six days of good work going into um, Atlanta. And then tomorrow they're going to be able to do some five on five on zero. Uh, so they're going to be able to get a good, a good, some good work tomorrow as well. Looking forward to seeing them. Chase. Scott, after that first quarter, you guys started kind of running the offense through Robin Lopez in the post. Um, given how much you guys have struggled to score these past three games, is that just kind of um, an example of how creative you've, you've had to get with missing so many scores? Yeah, I mean, you have to. I thought, I thought really that we probably played them pretty even until I thought that I thought the game, I mean, I hate to say the game, uh, as you, as you finish the game, looking back, I, I was worried about that, that closing of the first quarter. I think the last three minutes, they ended up getting 15 points on some, you know, some shots that we probably could live with, but they ended up making them. And that's how they stretched that lead in that first quarter. But after taking away those three minutes, the game was pretty, pretty close. And you have to be creative when you have uh, a lot of our, rotation guys or three starters out uh you just have to you can't and then brad give brad credit i mean he comes back uh back to back big minutes still competes um just so he the winning spirit that he has is is, is critical to our future success and and to, to go through it now and and still not you know not give in uh, it's huge. It's huge for me. It's huge for our staff, and it's huge for our team going forward. Because we know that we're going to be healthy, and we're going to be everything's going to be much better when we have our entire group and get our group. And there's going to be a little bit of adjustment, uh, but they're going to they're going to we're going to adjust in the right direction. And then Anthony Gill, um, you know, so far he just hasn't been able to to translate his scoring and his shooting early in his NBA career. Um, what, what do you think he needs to do to kind of have the same success he had in the Euro League? Yeah, he just needs to step in and, and, and keep working on his game and his shot. I mean, I, I'm surprised he's not making some of his threes. He makes them in practice, makes them in before games. But, you know, this is this is all new to him. Uh, gr great, great teammate. Not a good teammate, a great teammate. Uh, he's, a, he's a guy that he can help your culture and help your team. Uh, win and maybe doesn't play, uh, doesn't play at all probably when we have our complete roster. But he plays without playing, and those guys are important. I, I was the I was the MVP of that type of role, and you you need it. And the coaches in, uh, need it, but I, I think he I mean he's definitely capable of making shots. He just hasn't been able to hit threes uh, so far early in his NBA career. Kind of this transition into becoming a regular rotation player has has been for you what has this process been like uh you know it's been I mean, it's been great from my experience uh for sure um you know we got some guys out right now which makes it 
you know, tough on us as a, as a whole, um, especially with having to play big minutes and, and this long, this long kind of road trip back to back. But, you know, I'm, I'm thankful for the opportunity. Um, it's been a great experience for me. Uh, you know, I still need to, you know, continue to get better locking in defensively and making sure I got the coverages down and doing the right thing defensively. But, you know, as a whole, it's been, it's been great experience for me, you know, coming in as a second year player. Um, you know, it's been, it's just been great experience. Chase, go ahead. Hey, Garrison, you know, you guys are missing a lot of the top scorers on this team and um, some of the best shooters, obviously, Bertans and Thomas Bryant. What's it been like just these last few games trying to generate offense and create space? It's been tough. You know, we were, we were out, you know, almost two weeks from playing. Even the guys that, you know, were, have, didn't get COVID, but we're in the protocol. But it's been two weeks since we since we played, and then you know having a back to back and quick road trip. You know, it's 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 kind of tough. You know, getting your getting your game legs back. You know, getting into the swing of things. You know, I think offensively we we uh, our spacing wasn't quite correct. You know, like in some of the games before before we got hit with COVID, um, and then defensively it just seems like we're kind of even myself like a ton just a step slow. Um, which, you know, it's, I think it's kind of normal. It's no excuses. We took two weeks off, but, you know, I think it's normal when you haven't played an NBA game. I mean, everybody, everybody can score in the NBA, you know? <laughs> so when you take two weeks off and then come in without no game legs trying to guard these guys, it's tough. Um, but no excuses. I mean, we need to, you know, you know, continue to do what we do and, and play harder and play smarter. You know, we can't keep going over screens. I can't keep going over screens when I'm supposed to go under screens and all that kind of thing. So. But, you know, there's, there's no excuses, but those two weeks off were tough for us. To have the offense stall, um, I would imagine that's kind of an unusual feeling for you guys because you're one of the top scoring teams in the league. And, you know, usually it's been defense that you guys have been trying to improve, right? Yeah. yeah. What, what was the question? My fault. I didn't hear the first part. Oh, uh, to what, I, guess, I guess it was more of a statement. But what's it been like for you guys uh, going through that when offense has generally been, you know, your biggest strength, uh, you know, for several years running? I mean, it's hard when you got, you know, some of our best scorers out, you know, guys that, you know, we don't normally get as much time, have to come in and pick up the weight of some top scorers, some top shooters, it's tough. I mean, you know, we, when you got that many guys out, it's, and especially being off two weeks, it's, you can't be perfect and we can't expect ourselves to be perfect. And, you know, I, I hate to keep using that excuse, but, you know, when you don't have your game legs, you don't have your top scores, it, it, it makes it tough on Brad because Brad's doing everything he can. I mean, he put up 40, whatever tonight. I mean, he's doing everything he can. And we got to have guys step up to help him out um, because, you know, he's, he's the best scorer in the league. And, and when you got that, it, it should make our job, the role guys, easier. But we need to step up for him because he's playing his heart out. And it's, it's incredible to come in and watch what he does in and night out. And it's just – it's uh, – I'm thankful I have a teammate like that that I can I can learn from and watch every night because he's 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 fun to watch and play with. Chris Miller. Hey Garrison, I know you're in a, a competitor, but when these losses are mounting like this, how do you process this mentally? And I I hate losing more than I like winning. Um, it's it's so tough for me. It's it's the worst feeling in the world. You know, I sit and sulk on it probably more than I should. Um, and it's, we can't, we can't let this, this losing streak that we've had become our mentality. And it's tough to do when you drop, when you're three and 11, it's tough to make that not your mentality, but, you know, we got to keep reminding ourselves that the beginning of the year ain't going to define, you know, nobody's going to remember this part of the year if we come back and make a run. Um, Nobody's gonna, you know, be like, "Oh my gosh, they're so terrible because they're star." It's how you finish, and so you know, we need to we need to keep that in our minds and and not let this losing streak become our mentality and be okay with losing. Because I'll never be okay with losing. I don't care if we lose, um, or if we don't win a game the rest of the season. I'll never be okay with that and just be complacent with that. So, you know, we we need to keep fighting and, and realize that this part of the season ain't gonna define the rest of the season. Thanks, man. Ava. Garrison, could you elaborate on that just a little bit more, how you guys kind of lift yourselves 
out of that mentality, obviously, other than other than getting a win, but what that process is like just for you guys, not necessarily just you individually, but in the locker room as a team as well. I mean, it's hard. It's super hard when you lose so many games like this. Uh, but we got great leaders. We got we got Brad and Russ who are constantly on us to, you know, be better um, and being positive. It's not like they're just blaming people and doing this and that. They're giving constructive criticism, which we all need. Um, and we just, you know, we need to come together as a group and realize we're not, this is not acceptable and we'll never be okay with losing. And, you know, just keeping that mindset that, you know, the beginning of the year ain't going to define us. And I, I feel like that's what we all need to keep in our heads, even though it's one of the hardest things to do when you're three and 11. It is super hard to, you know, keep that mentality of we're all right, we're going to pick ourselves up and we're going to bounce back and, and have a great year, especially when you're in a losing streak like this. It's super hard. And, um, but, you know, we got to keep being on each other. We can't just stop talking to each other because that's when, you know, you get complacent. And that's when you just allow things to just go terrible. Um, so we need to continue to be able to take constructive criticism from each other and not sit here and blame each other because, you know, we're a team, you know, it's not, it's not one of us that's just screwing us up. It's all of us that are messing, having mistakes. So, you know, when we realize that we need to quit blaming each other and take constructive criticism the right way, I think we'll, we'll be headed in the right direction. And just wondering how you're feeling physically, obviously, after all of the time off to come back and head straight into three games on the road and, and four nights, um, how you holding up? It's tough. You know, my body's hurting. I'm excited for this day off tomorrow. Uh, it's back to back. It's tough. But, you know, it's it's all a mentality. You know, it's, you know, we're all hurting. You know, we're not the only team in the league that's playing back to back. We're not the only team in the league that's hurting. I mean, I know not many teams have had two weeks off, but still, you know, we can't come in here and be like, oh, my body's hurting, so that's an excuse for me to not get back on defense. So that's, my body's hurting, so that's an excuse for me to take this playoff. No, it's, it don't matter if your body's hurting. You need to play through that. All right, we'll take a couple more. Kellen? Hey, Garrison. Uh, just going back to what you said about Brad, um, how, how would you describe, like, what he's doing this season with, the, you know, his scoring, leading the league in scoring, and um, – do you get used to, you know, you put up 47 points tonight. Do you get used to that? And can you elaborate on what you said that you've learned from him? Well, he's an incredible player. I mean, you see how he's being guarded by these guys. I mean, nobody lets him get an easy catch. And for me as a shooter, they kind of do the same thing to me. So it's, it's I'm thankful I get to learn from a guy like that who's able to get open, especially being guarded like that. But, I mean, what he's doing is just insane. I saw a stat the other day what it, he's – most 25 points in, at the start of the season, like top three or whatever it is. I don't know, but it's pretty incredible what he's doing. And, uh, you know, I'm thankful I get to play with a guy like that. And it's not like he's a selfish guy. He's one of the best players, one of the best teammates I've played with. And he's a great leader. Um, and he's not out here just, you know, trying to play by himself. He's trying to play with us. And that's on us to help him out because he's doing everything he can. And he's trying to get guys involved. And when he's got three people around him, you know, somebody's got to come get the ball and knock down a shot. It's not just him that needs to score the whole night. Of course, he can carry us, but somebody's got to step up and help him out because, you know, I mean, he's the best scorer in the league, you know. And you, you can't really say much negative about that guy. Thanks. All right, last question from Fred. Hey, Garrison. Um, I'm, I'm just curious, building off of that, how have you seen defenses? Because you're obviously new to a lot of guys when you go into games. A lot of those players have played against you before. How have you seen defenses change in the way they guard you after you make or even take a couple shots early? Um, yeah. and, and and what have you learned from from watching Brad run, run around those off ball screens and that kind of stuff? Like what specifics? Just the way he kind of. He, his pace, the way he starts full speed, stops real quick, gets separation and gets off the screen. That's stuff that I've been able to take away. I haven't used it, you know, as much because, you know, we're going to run all the plays for Brad. Um, and, you know, guys are starting to hug me and not let me run around like I would like to. Um, but it's, it's natural when you're a shooter. So just being able to watch him and watch film on him and watch the way he gets open has helped my game a lot. Because the way he starts and stops and goes, it's like, you know, especially with his speed, it's, it's super hard to guard. Um, and I'm not near as fast as him, but I can take some of his techniques that he uses to get open on, on screens and kind of implement uh, 
that into my game. I and, mean, you know, I need to do a better job of moving around on the perimeter, you know, setting rip screens, setting flares to help get other guys open. Because when guys are sticking to me, I can become a great screener for other guys. Um, and that's something that I need to improve into my game um, to help other guys get open. Um, so, so I'll be, I'll be, uh, you know, continue to work with my player development coach, you know, try to improve on those things um, to try to help Brad as much as I can. I mean, <laughs> he's, he's one of the best players I've ever seen. So, you know, whatever us role players can do to help him out, it's only going to help our team out more. Hey, B, I just talked to Garrison Matthews and he said, we cannot let three and 11 be our mentality. Are you getting the sense that that mentality is seeping through the group? And if so, how do you guys fix it? Uh, first place, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, that's a good quote by G. You know, uh, when you're facing adversity, you know, as a team or individually or whatever the case may be, it's easy to kind of just fall into, you know, that trap, you know, and we, we know we're a lot better than what our record is showing and we can't, we can't feed into that. You know, we can't think that that's the type of team we are. Granted, reality is reality. But we also believe that, you know, we're a lot better than that. We're shorthanded. Um, so we haven't played in two weeks. So, you know, everything is, we're still getting, getting back, you know, so there's no excuse 100%. Um, but, you know, that's definitely a great, that's a great saying by G. You know, we can't feed into being three and 11. Uh, being that type of team, that's not who we are. We gotta, we know we're better than that. And uh, hopefully the guys that we get back Friday can, can give us a, a boost. Kind of a follow up about what you've been accomplishing. Um, you know, it's already kind of seeped out nationally. You are putting up unbelievable numbers, but not getting the result. Uh, knowing you for as long as I have, I know that it's great that you're scoring all these points, but you want the result of victory. How are you balancing what you are doing individually with not getting what you ultimately want. God's bless me. You know, that's what, that's always is. You know, it's all me scoring. That's, that's, that's all him. I, I can't, I can't take credit for it. Like, he gives me energy every night. He gives me the strength every night to, to play this game and the talents that I have. And, you know, I just go in the gym and try to perfect those talents and, you know, try to come out and play with energy every night. Whatever that looks like at the end, it looks like, you know, I don't come out and say, I want to score 50 tonight. I want to score 40 tonight. That doesn't happen. A lot of the shit I'm doing is I'm in awe half the time too. So, you know, that's why I just credit him for everything because he's giving me the energy. He's giving me everything I need, uh, you know, to continue to, to push hard, play hard each and every night. Chase. Hey, Chase, uh, Brad, obviously you've been able to score points, but as a team, what's it been like trying to generate offense, missing a lot of the top scorers and, and you know some of your best shooters that I'm sure obviously add a lot of space? Uh, it's not easy, you know, because we come in every night knowing that you know their objective is to keep the ball out of my hand and take the ball away from me, you know, double team, triple team, whatever the case may be, and, uh, and do it for 48 minutes. You know, teams are going to do that. Um, you know, so it. I don't say, I won't say it gets draining, um, but it, it's tough, you know, it's, it's very tough because I have to work hard, you know, to get the ball, to get engaged in the offense. Um, but us as a unit, you know, it's, we're still working new faces in, new guys in, guys are getting more playing time now. Um, we got a lot of guys probably not playing in their true positions. So it's, it's, it's an adjustment, you know, we all, we're all adjusting on the fly. And, uh, you know, it's, our offense, for one, is, is predicated on not turning the ball over. You know, um, myself leading the charge, and I think I might even be leading the damn league in turnovers. So just taking care of the ball, getting a shot up every possession, and um, you know, just really moving without the ball, cutting hard, setting screens, um, just doing everything with a purpose. You know, that's what I was telling guys in the locker room. Like, I don't care who shoots it. I don't care if you open shoot it because. We're, you know, we're not going to get those throughout the game. We're not going to get those throughout the possession. You know, we got to take what we get. So uh, it's still a work in progress. It isn't easy, you know, uh, but keep chugging. And and what do you think it'll be like Friday when you do get that wave of players back? You know, Coach Brooks said you guys might get four or five guys. Well, it'll be another adjustment uh, because I'm sure they'll probably be on minutes when they come back. Can't just throw them right into the fire. 
and they haven't played in damn what three weeks now. So that's that's gonna be tough on them and their bodies. So you know we gotta we gotta play that kind of smart. Um, but it'll be it'll be good just to one get back home and just you know be in our arena and hopefully when the guys we get back, you know they they're they're gonna help us out a lot. But you know no matter who comes back who we have available, you know we can, we gotta work with what we got. You know we gotta go out and compete. You know for forty games. Ava. Brad, what is it like knowing that whatever your body language is, whatever face you make at the end of the game when you're just sitting on the bench is going to be then memed and go viral on the internet and like unleash a wave of opinions? Yeah, I got to be better with that. I mean, every, I mean, you guys, media is going to blow, blow it up. And, I mean, rightfully so. I'm, I'm, I'm mad about losing. Like, I don't, if I'm, if I'm sitting over there laughing and smiling, what is, what is the media going to say then? You're like, oh, he doesn't take it serious, you know? So I just hate losing, you know? Um, I hate losing. And I'm going to continue to show pissed off faces. I try to control them as much as I can, but I don't like losing, so. Fred? Brad, Brad just kind of following up on that, I mean, you talked earlier about the team mentality of being three and 11 and not wanting that to affect you on an individual level. I mean, you, you guys have had losing records two years in a row. What, what is it like individually being a top guy on a team that has struggled to this degree over the last two and a fraction years? It's tough. I'm not going to sit here and be naive, but it is, it's tough, you know, because we want to win and I want to win. You know, this is why I stayed, you know, I want to win. You know, this is, I figured this, this is the place I can get it done. So it's tough. You know, last year was what it was. You know, we had a lot of guys out. John was out last year. It was just it was a rocky year. Um, COVID hit. So last year was just crazy. You know, this year it's almost the same thing, like in a mini bubble outside the bubble. And no fans, no nothing, no practice time. It's been tough. You know, uh, and but for me, like I said earlier, man, I, I give it to God for just giving me the strength to just do it every night, to just show up every night. You know, regardless of what's going on, regardless of how we're playing, you know, it's my job to lead and come out and compete every night. You know, uh, and hopefully, guys will follow behind that. So that's just been my mindset. You know, I I feel like I would drive myself batshit crazy. If, you know, I consumed in every single problem. Like in every single thing that we did wrong, or every single loss, like I would, I think I'll be, I'll be back crazy. So you know, I'm just taking it a day at a time. Um, you know, constantly working on just focusing on getting better. How can I help my teammates get better? What more can I do personally to help us win? Because um, I'm never going to shift blame on my teammates. Or I'm never going to blame coach. I'm always going to blame myself or look at myself and figure out how I can win the game or help us win. So. Same here, you know, it doesn't change. Uh, but I would be lying if I said it was easy for him. Zach? The all-star voting starts tomorrow. Do you think finally being at the top of the scoring list uh, will get some people on notice to, to show some respect? I don't know. I was leading scorer for a point last year, so. I think up to all star break and we see what happened then. So I'm definitely not getting my hopes up this year. Neil. Brad, Tommy's a guy that, you know, likes to have a close relationship with his players. Even, you know, before he got the job, he was in the locker room, you know, chatting with you guys after games sometimes. What has been, you know, those conversations as you guys have dealt with this adversity the past few weeks? I mean, he's just, he's encouraging, you know, he's, he's telling us to keep our heads up and just keep chugging. We know he's shorthanded and there's a lot of stuff going on and COVID and within the team. And, you know, we just got to you know, work what we got and keep chipping. You know, uh, he's positive, he's working. And I don't know what he's doing behind the scenes or whatever, but, you know, he's, he's encouraging. You know, he, he doesn't, he doesn't quit on the team or on us. You know, he's, he's around us all the time. He's at every game, you know, he's, he's bought in. So can't question that. I'll finish up with Leonardo. Brad, you played at the great level again tonight, but 
you lost. It bothers you to be the best player of a losing team. How to find a solution? Uh, Leonardo, I swear if I had that answer, I think I might, I would be a genius, uh, probably. I think, I think if we all had that answer, I think, I think we all would be blurting it out right now, but I, I don't have that answer. I don't know how, I don't know. You know, we just got to keep, it's not just one thing that's bothering us, one thing that's affecting us, you know, that, you know, we could just pinpoint, okay, we can click it and, you know, we're good in this game. Everything's solved. Like it's it's not that easy. You know, we have to be better defensively. Uh, you know, accepting those challenges, stop turning the ball over, getting our guys back healthy. So it's a lot, it's a lot for us to do in order for us to really turn this thing around. Uh, but you know, our confidence is still high, like G said. We can't have the mindset of being three and eleven. Uh so you know, come Friday, we got another tough. In a quick second, are you frustrated? Is the sky blue? <laughs> My man. <laughs>